One of the most saddening scenes in the Bible is after Jesus' crucifixion, he is brought down from the cross and laid in his mother's arms. This scene has been portrayed many times throughout the history of art. The scene is called the Pieta, which is the Italian for pity. The scene is usually portrayed as an agonizing moment, as this sculpture is right here. Michelangelo was commissioned by a French cardinal to construct his own Pieta. The contract was signed in 1497, and in it, it had that the Virgin had to be clothed, Christ had to be dead in her arms, the sculpture had to be as large as a man, and he would be paid 450 papal ducats in gold if he finished his work from the, a year from the start. In the scene, Jesus is seen in, in his mother's lap as his head hangs back. As visibly seen, Mary is much larger than Jesus in the sculpt. Michelangelo tried to hide Mary's great size by sculpting the drapery under her, under Jesus. The reason Mary is bigger is because if Jesus was bigger and laying on her lap, the sculpture would look awkward and clumsy, not peaceful and majestic as it does now. One of the aspects that sets Michelangelo's Pieta apart from the rest is the controversial age of Mary. At the time of the crucifixion, Mary would have been in her 50s while Jesus was only 33 years old. However, in the sculpture, Mary looks much younger than the 33-year-old Jesus. There are many different theories as to why Michelangelo portrayed Mary to be so young. One of the views is the Neoplatonic view that Mary is portrayed in her ideal form. Although there's not much evidence supporting this since Jesus is not portrayed in his ideal form by his scrawny body. The other view involves the Holy Trinity, which the shape of the, cult the sculpture symbolizes because it looks like a triangle from the frontal view. According to the Trinity, there are three divine bodies, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God, the Father, and God, the Son, at the same time. So therefore, he is Mary's uh, son and husband at the same time. So the sculpture portrays Mary not as the mother of God, but as the wife of God. Michelangelo may have got this view from Dante's Divine Comedy, where he says, Virgin Mother, Daughter of Thy Son. There is also the Modernist view, where the two are in two different time frames. Mary is seeing Jesus at his birth, while Jesus is in his present state at his death. Michelangelo's historic background says that he portrayed Mary as young because his own mother was young when she died, so he wants her to look eternally youthful, just as his mother was to him. There is a quote from Michelangelo that suggests the true reason behind him making Mary look so youthful. Ascanio Candivi, his friend and biographer, wrote down that Michelangelo said, Don't you know that chaste women remain far fresher than those who are not chaste? This is a theological perspective that says that since Mary was a virgin, she would not age as fast as women who were considered tainted. This is a very strict Catholic approach, which makes sense because Michelangelo was a devout Catholic. Although Jesus appears at the right age, his appearance also seems odd. He is shown with no crown of thorns, no nails, no gashes, no wounds, no blood, and no sweat. He lays in his mother's arms as if he is sleeping, not as if he is dead. This adds to the serenity, peace, and deepness of the work of art. It is a controlled and intense sadness between mother and son. Jesus also looks slender and weak, which goes against some of Michelangelo's other work. In Michelangelo's sculpture of Jesus carrying the cross, you could see, clearly see a muscular Jesus differing from the Jesus in the Pieta. This is one reason why some say the, the Pieta does not look Michelangelo-esque. Its intricate folds and complex elements, like the veins and the curled beard of Jesus, make it look almost gothic. The only parts that seem truly Renaissance are its purity and its single-minded unity. During the time that it was shown to the public, some people even claimed that it was not Michelangelo's work. Michelangelo was enraged by this, and as legend goes, he, 
sl he stayed out in the basilica until night, and by lantern, he carved his name into Mary's sash. This is the only work that Michelangelo has ever signed, and he admittedly regrets it, regretted it later. The writing on it, which is written in Renaissance Latin, seems sloppy, although to someone who is not a scholar, it looks perfect. Today, the piece of art is seen in the first chapel on the north side of New St. Peter's Basilica. It has undergone some damages throughout the years, especially to Mary's fingers, but has been repaired. In one story, a mentally ill man attacked the Pieta with a sledgehammer and knocked off Mary's nose, but marble was taken from her back to reconstruct the nose. Michelangelo gained much popularity from his Pieta and was commissioned by the Pope himself, Pope Julius II, to create the Pope's tomb. Michelangelo began work and planning for the tomb, but as he was working, the Pope changed his patronage funding towards a reconstruction of St. Peter's Basilica. Michelangelo was outraged that the Pope was not funding his project anymore, and he left Rome completely. He would not return until the Pope uh, prompted him into coming back to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The Pope died in 1513, and contract disputes over the completion of the tomb went on for 30 years after the Pope's death, but with his family members. The final agreement is to have Michelangelo only sculpt three of the figures on appearing on the tomb. The active life and the dedicated life. Michelangelo's original plan was extravagant, which would include over 40 figure, figures sculpted by him himself, leading to an apex at the top where the Pope's sarcophagus would be laid. Contemplative life. The three sculptures that he made were all at the lower levels of the final tomb. The sculpture of Moses is clearly the most powerful of the three. The story of Moses, according to the book of Exodus, is that he led the Jews out of Egypt and went up to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. Upon his arrival back down with the Jews, he saw them worshiping a pagan uh, golden calf. He was outraged and threw God's tablets on the ground, smashing them. In the sculpture, Moses is carrying two tablets, which are the Ten Commandments, in his right hand. The sculpture is an immense eight feet high sitting down and was originally planned to be on the higher level of the tomb, so his abdomen region is unproportionately large. The sculpture portrays Moses as a wise but powerful leader, but also one of terrible wrath. The art critic Vasario describes it as terribilitia, which is similar to the sublime. And sublime is anything that uh, conducts fear, fright, or terror into the view. Moses' powerful arms, strong legs, large beard, and deep stare definitely reflect fear. In the sculpture, Moses' left leg is brought back all the way, as if he is about to stand. Many believe that this is the moment that Moses stands up in rage and throws the tablets at the ground after seeing the Jews worship a pagan. A counter-argument to this is that the tablets are clutched firmly in Moses' right hand, and that his left leg is brought back simply because he is meant to be a corner piece of the tomb, and the right side is closed up because the Pope is meant to be on the right, uh, leading to the centerpiece. They would argue that his deep stare is simply because he is all strucken after seeing God. He is seen with horns on his head, which comes from the mistranslation of St. Jerome's Vulgate Latin Bible. The Hebrew word for shine was mistranslated into cornutus, which is the Latin word for horn. Michelangelo may have put the horns there purposely, because horns are a sign of divinity in the Nordic and Near Eastern cultures. He is also seen with gartered breeches on his legs, which are considered Germanic and are seen often in Roman triumphal arches to portray the Germanics. In fact, the original tomb was planned on to be very classical and Roman, portraying many prisoners like Germanic people in Rome. Moses' intricate beard is considered to be the best beard in art history. It also serves to create a lot of movement in the painting, aside from its intricate curls and weaves. 
Moses' left foot is kicked back, which makes his hips turn left, yet his abdomen turns right, while his head turns left, and his beard is turned is pulled right. So it creates a lot of motion and makes Moses feel alive and adds to his power. Above all, Michelangelo aimed to make Moses look as powerful as possible because he was meant put there for the purpose of guarding the tomb of Pope Julius II. One may wonder how Michelangelo went about creating these incredible marble sculptures. He would go to the quarry and envision the piece of artwork inside a block of marble. He looked for signs of life in the marble and would discard any piece of marble that did not seem pure enough. Before he started sculpting, he would make numerous drawings and clay figures or wax models. Today, the tomb of Julius II is seen in San Pietro in Vincoli, Rome. This is also the, the resting place of the believed chains of St. Peter. Michelangelo is possibly the greatest artist ever. His range is seen through the peaceful and serene sculpture of the Pieta and the powerful sculpture of Moses.